if you want to know anything about a livestock carriers and carrying animals on ships and this is the video for you guys this is part one of the video and i'll be putting up the second and the last part very soon as well uh, watch this video this will be very helpful for you to prepare for examinations as mariners because this is pretty much a summarized version of knowing different aspects of operations on livestock ships regulations governing the carriage of cattle vary from country to country with some countries enforcing them strictly while others do not the regulations provide for the safe and the humane carriage and stipulate size construction and capacity of pens deck heights ventilation and lighting arrangements fresh water and fodder storage and supply cleaning and disinfection of animal accommodation sewerage disposal care of animals angle of ramps for boarding and disembarkation i am going to be discussing most of these in today's video the main trades are sheep from australia or new zealand or to the middle east countries especially saudi arabia cattle and horses from argentina to europe and cattle from ireland poland and italy to the middle east during the hajj or the pilgrimage season a large number of animals are shipped to saudi arabia every ship intending to load or discharge livestock shall inform the prescribed port authority of its intention to do so within the required notice period normally not less than 48 hours on arrival of the ship in port a marine surveyor accompanied by a veterinary officer or an animal doctor shall board the vessel to ensure the livestock fittings have been provided and the ship is clean and fit for the carriage of livestock the vet must inspect the livestock before loading and issue a certificate of fitness stating that the livestock is capable of withstanding the conditions they are likely to experience on the proposed voyage the vessel should also have an approved livestock capacity plan showing fittings and requirements for the containment of animals ventilation and lighting arrangements provision storage and distribution of food and water drainage firefighting appliances and stability data if the plan is not approved the owner may apply for it by submitting information and drawings of all the subjects i have discussed right now with an application fee to the government of the port of loading the livestock capacity plan is to be provided for inspection to the surveyor at the loading port for those of you going for examinations in australia you may find the details of the livestock carriage requirements as per the australian government in marine order number 43 sheep may be carried on deck or in an enclosed part of the ship they must however be protected from exposure to the weather or sea from injury and from necessary suffering they shall not be carried against hot bulkheads such as the engine room or boiler room casings unless such bulkheads are insulated or covered with wood sheathing livestock shall not be carried in more than one tier on a deck except that sheep may be carried in two tiers if carried over any hatchway the hatchway must be protected against damage and the hatch covers shall be secured against any movement the height between the decks must be normally 2.3 meters lower heights up to a minimum of 1.8 meters may be accepted provided special requirements for ventilation are met two means of escape to the open deck separated by not less than one half the length of the compartment shall be provided for each enclosed space that livestock are carried where different species are carried livestock shall be segregated according to their species where hostility may arise between animals of the same species they shall be segregated according to sex age and size livestock should not be carried in areas where they would obstruct the approach or exit from the accommodation space means of escape from any space or a space necessary for the safe working of the ship they shall also not interfere with the life saving or firefighting appliances or the navigation of the ship they should also not prevent the sounding of any tanks or bilges they should also not interfere with the operation of closing appliances on the ship such as weather tight or watertight doors they should also not obstruct freeing ports or interfere with lighting and ventilation to other parts of the ship 
sufficient number of persons shall be carried on the ship to tend the livestock during the voyage. These are called stockmen, cowboys or drovers and their knowledge is more about the livestock than about the ships. Hence their duties attend, their duties include assisting in the loading and discharging of the livestock, feeding and watering the animals, maintaining satisfactory hygiene and drainage, patrolling at different times even during nights to ensure that the animals are calm and undisturbed. They also recognize distressed or sick animals and isolate and quarantine them after reporting to the master. They also remove and dispose dead animals. They monitor the ventilation of the compartment to prevent rise in temperature and accumulation of gas and they clean, maintain and repair the cargo pens in which the animals are carried after discharge. Sheep require 1 kilogram of sheep pellets or 2% of the animal's body weight of hay per day plus 4 liters of clean water per animal per day. Sheep must be fed from the troughs or racks so that the food remains in the trough long after distribution giving all the animals a chance to eat. The entire daily allowance may be made available at one time. Food should be provided as soon as the animals are on board. Do not wait for sailing. Food in the troughs prior loading speeds up the loading rate. Food and water should preferably be available all the time. Feeding and watering should not be done from the same trough, but where it is unavoidable, the trough should be cleaned before being used for watering. However, it is better to have dirty water in the trough than no water at all. Cattle require 2% of their body weight per day of body weight of hay per day and 45 liters of water per animal per day. Cattle should be fed twice a day while water is to be made available at all times in clean troughs. Hay is stored in bundles on the topmost deck from where it is dropped down onto the respective cattle decks. Where fodder is stored in bulk, the tanks or silos should be frequently cleaned out to ensure that the quality of fodder is good. Fresh water piles must be provided on each deck and space where livestock is carried. Unless an automatic watering system is installed, sufficient number of cocks are to be provided which may be fitted with a flexible hose. Ventilation of the compartments is an important aspect in the successful carriage of livestock. Ventilation prevents the rise of temperature and humidity, thereby reducing heat exhaustion among the animals and prevents accumulation of ammonia, hydrogen sulfide and other irritating and toxic gases. Adequate provisions must be made for ventilation of all spaces in which livestock is carried. Mechanical means of ventilation must be provided for enclosed spaces capable of changing the total volume of air in the space within 3 minutes if the deck height is 2.3 meters and within 2 minutes if the deck height is 1.8 meters and in proportion by interpolation if the deck height is anything between 1.8 and 2.3 meters. Air intakes should be cited so as to provide clean and fresh air and the exhaust should be cited as high as possible. Sufficient power generating capacity shall be provided on the vessel to enable continuous running of the blowers without interfering with the normal operation of the ship. Sufficient spares shall be carried to the satisfaction of the surveyor to enable replacement of defective fans or fan motors. In the event of a breakdown of mechanical equipment, natural ventilation shall be immediately provided through natural draft ventilators, wind sails or by opening covers, vents, etc. not required to be closed by load line regulations. Finally, the life saving appliances, the, the life and the firefighting appliances where hay, straw, foodstuff or bedding of a flammable nature is stored, notices prohibiting smoking or use of naked lights shall be prominently displayed. A fixed firefighting installation using water as the extinction medium shall be fitted in each compartment where hay or straw for the livestock is carried or even used. The fire pumps shall be capable of supplying water to this system as well as to the fire main. Alternatively, portable fire extinguishers shall be placed one for every 18 meters length of the space. Additionally, fire hydrants with hoses and nozzles are to be placed every 18 meters in enclosed spaces where livestock are carried. On exposed decks, fire protection is to be to the satisfaction of the surveyor. In part 2 of this video, 
or the series of videos, I'm going to be talking about the other aspects of livestock operations, such as handling, transport, tally, stability, lighting, drainage, access, pens, animal diseases, and uh, the medicines required to be carried as well as the mortality. Thank you for watching this video and watch out for part two, which I'm going to release very soon. Bye for now.